technology access, um, and then uh, what we're doing to help with the social emotional needs of our uh, students. So I'll go through that in a little bit more detail. Um, last week, the uh, state opened up that request again and added several more details. Overall, our teachers um, and our administrators were well ahead of the game, both with initiating it and in excess, really, of what the requirements were for the state, which has sort of been our go-to. Um, we're not interested in meeting the minimum requirements. It's always, what can we do for the best of our students? And I believe we made that transition exceptionally well. So when we talk about the learning materials and the types of content, we have paper, textbooks that are out there. We know that um, on Tuesdays we have instructional materials that are delivered home both in digital format and paper. So when I say digital format, they're coming out and coming back to us um, on USB drives if the individuals don't have access to the internet. We have been using pretty close to every tool that we have for communication, including telephones, email, video conferencing, social media, our website, and then we've also been learning using our learning management system which is through PowerSchool called Class Pages. Um, let's see. In addition to that, we have been meeting the needs of our special education students with uh, the consultation work uh, of our special education um, uh, teachers and the process of identifying and reviewing uh, CSE IEP or IEPs through the CSE and 504 process has been ongoing. And that did not stop uh, at all. And all of those meetings have been going on as uh, normal, with the exception that they're now done primarily through video conference or phone conference. As far as instruction goes, we have been doing synchronous or asynchronous, meaning we've had recorded uh, classes that have gone out, which is uh, asynchronous, meaning not in actual real time, or synchronous, meaning the teacher has actually been teaching two students in a one-to-one -one or one-to-group setting in a live format. Uh, that has been done primarily through Zoom, but also through a couple other tools. When it comes to technology access, um, we know that all of our students in grades 4 through 12 have district provided devices. If they have cellular phone coverage at their uh, home, we have distributed wireless uh, internet devices to them. So in other words, MiFi or hotspots. So that really, uh, we had 100 of those total that um, we have purchased for this primary purpose. And that has really helped to break up uh, the digital divide that we had between students who did have internet and students who didn't. Of course, that doesn't rectify all of our students' needs for the internet. So we've had a variety of other pieces that we're doing, including the USBs going back and forth, paper copies going back and forth, um, so that we can keep them engaged in the process. As well as social emotional needs, we know that our counselors, social workers, psychologists, as well as support for um, our family support workers have all been heavily engaged with the students. When a student drops off, so to speak, or we don't have communication with them for several days, one of those individuals um, will reach out to them personally. Um, if in fact they don't get in touch with them, we will make a home visit and we do that with the assistance of our school resource officers. So we feel as though we've not only been ahead of the game, but have actually done exceptionally well um, in the process of providing the continuity of instruction. Our goal is really to do the very best that we can for our students and respond to their needs. So at any point in time when a teacher finds a student who needs something, no matter what that could be from food to instructional materials to social or emotional support, uh, we have a system in place whereby we can get that for our students. Anybody have any questions for Mark? Nope. Nope. Aaron? All right. Um, Bob asked me to speak a little bit on uh, food deliveries that we've had. Um, so we started in March, March 18th to the 31st, we delivered a um, little over 7,000 meals. In the month of April, uh, we delivered just under 15,000. Um, and that's Monday through Thursday for delivery for Monday or for lunch and uh, breakfast. And then just last Friday, or two Fridays ago actually, uh, we started the Friday backpack thing where uh, students were, could pick up or were delivered meals that would cover the weekend. So four meals for the weekend. Um, two Fridays ago, there were 354 uh, bags picked up. So that's 1,400 or 
1,416 meals. And then this Friday, uh, it dropped um, actually a little bit down to 271. So, um, you know, that's a little bit less. That's um, a little over 1,000 meals for the weekend. But the two Fridays alone, it's 2,500 meals for the community. So we'll continue to do that. Um, again, it's Monday through Thursday are both breakfast and lunch delivered. And then on Fridays, the delivery is meals for the weekends, and the weekend meals are provided by the Food Bank of Western New York, um, free to the district and free to them, the students. And that's all I have on food delivery. Um, well, I think everybody's going to acknowledge um, and share appreciation for our teachers. So let me start off and take everybody's uh, opportunity to do that. Now, well, um, the administrative team, and actually I'm going to extend that to our administrative team as well. Um, today is Teacher Appreciation Day. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, we'd like to think that it's at least a Teacher Appreciation Month. And no more of a time is it than the more, no time is it more important than it is right now when we see the teachers going the extra mile to provide instruction in relatively challenging circumstances. So once again, I just wanted to acknowledge um, our, our teachers, our staff across the board, from our uh, building to ground um, and support staff to all of our school related personnel um, and our bus drivers. Everyone is really pulled together and and just makes Salamanca a point of pride, not just for the community, but for each person. Um, I think each person can be proud to say that they work here for their students to go here because we really have uh, excelled and we could not do that without the people. This is just a building, um, but with people, it becomes a school and a family, and uh, we should all take pride in the work that um, everyone has done in these last four years together during these challenging times. Aaron, do you have anything else to add? No, oh, just that it was fun going out and uh, driving all over God's country to uh, deliver signs today. It was kind of cool. <laughs> all right, our board message. Sue, so you want to start? Maybe more fun. Meredith is a teacher. I'm proud of that very much so. And I really appreciate the administration and the teachers and how they are working with these things to go the extra mile with the, the bus with the IT department. I went down and saw that and um, I'm just very proud of our school. Like I said, and I'm excited this afternoon when Karen was putting the sign in my lawn because it was a Yeah, I just got a message that the sound is horrible. Um, I don't know if that's what you were doing, Rob. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can everybody hear us better? Thumbs up, yeah. No. No. Okay. No. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Thanks, getting a thumbs down. <laughs> it's um, it's really garbled. Like okay. incredibly garbled. Oh, no, Meg. I mean, I can hear you, but it's just there's a lot of static in the background. 
back to just the microphones on the computer and then we'll mute. How's that, Meg? Is that better? That's way better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let the record reflect Bob solved the technology problem. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's a lot clearer. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah, I wanted to say thank you to all of our staff, our teachers. Um, I wanted to see you guys next year. still doing what they can you know and it's the same thing i said it before and i'll say it again education is still important we still want our kids to try their hardest we're not giving up you know we want to uh you know, bob's telling you uh, uh, we want our kids to really think that this school year isn't over we we want to keep uh, education we want our kids to really try you know regardless of whether readers for candle or whatever you know we're encouraging kids to continue you know, thank you to our staff who are struggling and trying every day to help with the education. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, uh, tomorrow starts um, Nurses Week, Nurses Week Appreciation. Uh, we have several nurses who are employed by our district. I want to say thank you to those people as well. Uh, that's, that's big. You know, what you guys do is so important. I mean, right now it's probably not seen, but personally, I've seen what our nurses do firsthand. You know, they've helped our family a lot and they help everybody else. So I do want to say starting tomorrow when nurses reach me that we appreciate you too and thank you for everything you do. Um that's kind of all I have. Okay. Brett, my knees are too unmute your mic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh boy. Should I talk on mine or yours? Talk on yours. Okay. Let me get my volume then. I can find it. Okay. okay. I also want to say thank you to everybody. Everybody is just going above and beyond all the time. It's like you said, Carrie, not just the teachers, the administrators, the bus drivers, the nurses, the cleaners, everybody in the school is going really above and beyond for the kids. And I think the kids are very appreciative of it too. Uh, you know, you see the banners around town. When I drove home from work today and I saw the sign in my yard, it made me smile. I was like, oh, I was thought of. Uh, my kid said, well, what did you get one for? You're not a teacher. <laughs> I was well, geez, I am on the board, but thank you. <laughs> um, but the same thing, my kids are trying to keep up with Zoom, and, and it's tough. It's, it's really, really tough for them. Uh, it's a new way of learning, but they're still keeping up with it, and they're still following through. Um, I also want to say thank you to whoever thought of the Adopt-A-Senior program, because Two people have adopted my daughter and it really just brought a smile to her face. Uh, she's received two different gifts from two different adoptive parents and it's really nice and thoughtful and an out of the box thinking and whoever came up with it, I just wanna say thank you because it really does mean a lot, not only from the kids, but you know, for the parents too, to be able to see that people haven't forgotten your child 
who's a senior and have lost so much. They also, I know, um, uh, we had a visit to today from, uh, I think it was Chad Bartosik stopped by and interviewed the different athletes that are the senior athletes and is going to put together something for them um, because they're losing out on their senior sport. So again, it's all those little things that, yeah, our kids have lost out on a lot, but man, they're getting things that no, other kids really haven't before. So it's really nice to see how the community, the district, the, everybody stepped up to really honor them. And again, thank you to all the teachers, uh, to all the different staff. We, we really do appreciate you. So, Meg, do you have anything that you wanna say too? Sure, just really quick, just echoing, you know, what everyone else has said, thank you to the teachers and um, administrators. Also, I, I couldn't quite catch everything Carrie said, but I did hear nurses and I would be remiss because my mom's a nurse to say, to acknowledge, you know, the nurses as well, because it is Nurse Appreciation Week um, too. Um, but everyone's just doing an amazing job, parents, um, you know, pulling through this. And just like I said, last meeting, we're all in this together. Every district is going through this. So um, I know it's stressful you know, at the same time, but we'll, we'll get through this together. Thank you. Bob? It's like a bad horror movie. <laughs> Bob, 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 Bob. Okay. Um, let me uh, try to do this and I'll look to uh, Mrs. Dudek or one of the um, staff members. If you can't hear me, I'll talk louder. So how's that sound right now? Is that good? I get a thumbs up. Okay, from Teresa, who's sitting relatively close. To to <laughs> so, okay, so um, I have a couple of things. Um, the first uh, two are dealing with the governor's executive orders, and given the speed of which things happened on Friday and the lateness of what they happened on Friday with regard to the school budget vote, uh, I'd like to go over a few of those issues just so um, we can understand. Okay, um, on May 19th, we would have had the regularly scheduled school budget district vote in the school board election and any other proposition that the uh, board may have approved. And there will be some this evening that we have been working on for the past few months. The governor's executive order 202.26 effectively postponed the May 19th budget vote to June 9th. The governor also banned in-person voting. So all of the votes and the budget propositions in all school districts in New York State will be moved to June 9th and be via absentee ballot. What that means for us is there are, uh, there are a series of successive actions that will be pushed forward. The first of which, the annual budget hearing, which would have been tonight, has been adjourned and moved to the June 2nd board meeting at 5.30 p.m. That will be the regularly scheduled board meeting. We'll have a separate notice and we will begin the June 2nd board meeting with a hearing on the budget officially, and that is standard is what we do. The date is June 2nd. All qualified voters will receive via the mail a ballot so they can cast an absentee ballot for the school budget vote, board of education vacancy, and other propositions that the board may authorize. And again, we will authorize in the proposition this evening. For Sorry, okay. Okay, all right. Um, absentee ballots will be mailed as soon as um, early next week. And there are a few procedural things that have to occur, one of which is Saturday and the other is Monday. The school district clerk by noon will certify and acknowledge any eligible candidate, candidate who files, files a nominee petition, petition excluding, excluding the requirements, requirements outlined in the governor's, the governor's order for signatures, signatures but all other requirements, all other requirements the same. remain the same. Those must be received by the district clerk, by the district on, clerk on, on, May on May 11th. Absentee ballot Absentee mailings will include a self-addressed stamped, self -addressed stamped envelope, envelope to the district returned by the to voter. the district by the voter. 
and those ballots must be returned no later than 5 p.m. on June 9th. Any ballot returned after 5 p.m. on June 9th will be disqualified per election law and requirements. The absentee ballot will be mailed beginning next week once we cross those thresholds again on, June, on May 9th and May 11th, regarding stipulations set forth in the governor's executive order. For those who are interested, a qualified voter is a voter who is a United States citizen and hold that thought for one second because on territory we have set this situation and option for individuals who are enrolled in Seneca, but a qualified voter is a United States citizen, 18 years of age on June 9th or earlier, a district resident for 30 days prior to the election, and the current address must be filed correctly with the Cattaraugus County Board of Elections in Little Valley, or be documented on the Seneca Nation tribal roll or properly registered through the district's personal registration. Personal registration with the district will be held on May 18th, 2020. If you have any questions on personal registration, you can contact the district clerk at 945-2400, extension 4025, at the district office at Janet's office. Yeah, I'm getting reports that it's all static. Okay, let's. Rob, is that microphone still on? Okay. What about the? What about the projection screen? That doesn't look like it's muted. All right. Hold tight, everyone. We're trying to work on the um, echo. It was bad, but it was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hold tight, everyone. Can I get to it from this way? Or what do I say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bear with us, everyone. The moment of silence has been brought to you by the library. <laughs> We're actually in the library. Uh, let's find the right. How is that? Is that any better, ladies and gentlemen? Yep. yep. Uh, all right, terrific. Let's move this over just a little bit so that you don't hear me breathing and hopefully you'll be able to hear the important people. Okay, let's try that regarding the budget again. Can I get a thumbs up if you can hear me? Karen, Karen has given a thumbs up. So we'll, we'll, we'll start again with the budget um, changes from the governor. Thank you, Teresa. The school budget election previously scheduled for May 19th by Executive Order 200.2, I'm sorry, 202.26, has been adjourned until June 9th, 
2020. The budget hearing, which normally would have been this evening, is scheduled for June 2nd at 5.30 p.m. during the regularly scheduled board meeting. On June 9th, eligible, eligible voters will receive a ballot in the mail which will be mailed sometime early next week after we cross two thresholds required by the governor's executive order on May 9th and May 11th. Qualified voters are individuals who are United States citizens, 18 years of age on the day of the election, June 9th, a district resident for 30 days immediately preceding the election and their current address is on file and correctly filed with either the Cattaraugus County Board of Elections in Little Valley or documented on the Seneca Nation tribal rolls or registered via district personal registration. District personal registration will be held on May 18th, 2020 in the district clerk's office at 50 Iroquois Drive, Salamanca. If you have any questions about personal registration, you can contact Janet Cook, the district clerk at 945-2400 extension 4025. It's important to note that individuals receiving ballots who are properly identified as a qualified voter must return the ballot to the district by 5 p.m. <clears throat> on June 9th. Any ballot received <laughs> by the district after 5 p.m. on June 9th will be disqualified. I should also note that individuals who are identified as Native Americans and indigenous persons who are properly registered and residing on the Allegheny Reservation in the Steamberg or Cold Spring, Heart, Cold Spring area for a period 30 days preceding the election may also be deemed as an eligible voter in this election. Again, if you have any questions, you can contact the district clerk at 945-2400, extension 4025. I'll stop here if there are any questions from the board members regarding the election for June 9th. And Sue, you mentioned you had a question. Yes. Um, the Board of Elections and previously uh, has helped Jim do school board elections, you know, doing the ballots and all that. Board cannot do the Board of Elections cannot do that this election. They are too busy with their own primary that has been canceled and then rescheduled. So they would like you to contact Phoenix Graphics. We we've done and that. They will do yeah. everything. They'll mail them. They'll they'll do the work. And is that what Kevin wanted me to tell you about? Um, yeah, Kevin and Courtney both have a. Please. Okay, so Kevin and Courtney have both contacted. I've been in charge. I've been talking to Phoenix Graphics. They sent me the um, the quote. I Bob and I are going to talk about it tomorrow. I know. I know. Just offhand, it's going to be approximately thirty thousand dollars plus postage. But I'm not. We we already had. Okay, so Phoenix Phoenix Graphics can print the ballot. We still have to manually. Uh, record it because Little Valley about about 3:30 today. Little Valley told me they don't have a machine. They don't have employee staff to program a machine. Our hopes were, my hopes were, to let Phoenix Graphic do it. When the ballot comes through, I will stand there for 12 hours if I have to feed the machine, as opposed to one yes, two yes, three yes, one no, two yes. So I don't I don't think we can use Phoenix Graphics. Going to do your ballots. We're, I think we're going to have to. We've got 8,000 uh, envelopes already ordered, like we normally send out to absentee people. God bless you, hon. Yeah. I believe me, I, I've had, I, I don't want to do it neither. And if the school is willing to do the 30,000 plus whatever, maybe it's best for them to do it. But our, our, our envelopes are already ordered and um, labels, I know we need 14,000 labels because you need 7,000 to go out and 7,000 to come back. Address back. It's, yep. it's going to be a nightmare. The well, you need two. Um, you need two with their addresses right. plus the envelope with the 
mm -hmm. school address on. Correct. Yes. So you need three. Yes. Yes, we have three. Three. Yeah. Yeah. This is it, tomorrow after I talk to Bob. There might be a possibility we can do it, but well, yeah. I just know that Kevin just, wanted me to recommend. There's another company out of Toronto that Kevin recommended. They're willing to give us a quote, but again, I gotta, I gotta sit yep. down with Bob. But it's, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare that they told us to do within three, four days. Oh, but it is what it is. That's what they're doing up there at the board, I guess. I yeah. Mean, like I said to everybody on June 10th, I'm, I'm gonna fall asleep and not worry about what happened <laughs> June night. But in between now, I'll probably not sleep, and that's okay. Yeah, we're uh, just. Uh, <laughs> Just to summarize, we are struggling like every school district in New York State um, with regard to the executive order to distribute to every possible eligible voter by absentee ballot and just the sheer volume of envelopes and the person power and the postage, this is going to be exorbitant for every school district and we were hopeful today that there would be some movement and some clarification from the governor's office. And that may come once they realize that turning around an absentee ballot in less than a week is an insurmountable task. So we're proceeding as if we are going to mail things out at the deadline from the governor, which is um, next week, once we set the ballot uh, based on that other date that comes on May 11th and uh, and May 9th respectively on those two dates and we have our support staff and we will have hands on deck we will practice social distancing stuffing envelopes we will oversee it we will do the very best we can to make sure that all ballots are mailed out at the deadline that's required and then when the ballots come back in we will follow our normal process of securing them how we determine to count them butting up against the state primary season is something we are going to have to either work out collaboratively with the county or work on an independent measure internally to verify the votes. All of the ballots will be secured in an undisclosed bunker mm -hmm. as we normally do and under the um, oversight of the district clerk. We're in good hands with Janet. She's very knowledgeable oh, yes, on this no about that. and we will get through it but I'm not entirely certain if I could tell you step-by-step step today. Um, we will partner with uh, CA BOCES who is offered to help us print things as best they can for the region. But there are other districts that are doing the exact same thing, Pioneer and Olean, which are much larger than Salamanca that are up against the same deadlines. So um, stay tuned, we will get it to you. If we get to the point where we do have an opportunity for assistance from an outside vendor and that seems like it's expedient and compliant with the regulations if that's a point in the bridge we have to cross i know where to get you all and we'll get a thumbs up and um uh, and make sure that we can comply with okay. everything the county board is going under they don't know what the heck's going on every day it changes so um they won't be able to help us yes like they normally have They've always, they've always been excellent. And if, they we have. Could, if, if we could have just got one machine, it would have solved everything because we could have had Phoenix traffic do it, and we could have tur taken turns feeding the ballots through, and it would have been. Or well, Phoenix could do that for you if they printed your. Yeah. They could tally, tally oh. for us? Well, they would have it on the machine. So they could tally, tally our ballots? It'd be right on the machine. So they yeah. give you a machine too? Is that what yes. you're saying too? You can get a machine over at, uh, in Chautauqua County. The old <coughs> ABM. We'll, 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 our, uh, we'll follow up with that tomorrow with Phoenix and... Um, yeah, ABM over in uh, Chautauqua County. That's where we get our machine. Or NTS up in uh, Niagara Falls. Okay. But either way I can... NTS I know better. And now okay, thanks, Sue. That that's helpful. Are there any other questions about the voting? No? Okay, I just two more quick things. Mm -hmm. um, just for the community's benefit and the board members' understanding, we are still awaiting further guidance from the governor's office and the state education department 
about when the 2019-2020 school year will conclude. Uh, we know that the year will conclude at some point in time. It was previously June 25th with graduation on the 26th. We know that summer regents exams have been canceled, but we do not know when the year will end, if we will have summer school, what summer school options might include, uh, and the scope and size and social distancing. Those determinations, uh, according to the governor's most recent directives will come out by the end of May. And that will require us to quickly turn around any decisions for summer programming. So it will be a very um, hectic and frenzied May and early June with that decision coming and then rolling in the following week uh, or nine days later for the election for, for the budget and the um, um, other propositions on there. And then lastly, we've touched on this. I won't uh, belabor it too much, but I do want to say that in recognition of Staff Appreciation Week, I hope that the community takes a moment and goes on our Facebook page and provides some words of encouragement for all of our staff. And uh, I, I, we couldn't be doing what we're doing without our teachers, our counselors, our social workers, our teacher assistants, our nurses, our administrators, our clerical, our food service, transportation, buildings and grounds, therapists, psychologists, all of our office staff, maintenance, everyone and anyone serves a role. And I've said this before, if you don't think our transportation department is integral in our instructional plan and that they are not driving instruction, they literally are driving instruction to kids. Before they were driving kids to us, but now they are the vehicle no pun intended or pun intended, that are helping us get materials to our students. Our food service workers are absolutely essential to us helping keep our kids and our community well fed. Our staff is regularly contacting our students. And when I was delivering signs all over Western New York today, um, and we tracked down one staff member who was with their parent nearly in Lockport, for safety reasons or security reasons or health reasons, our staff was doing Zoom lessons and teaching kids today. And I don't know what warmed my heart more, seeing the pictures of the staff with our superhero signs or knowing that they were still conducting their business just like it's a regular school day in this crazy, crazy COVID world. And hats off to them. And if our community could please go online leave some words of encouragement, some thumbs up, some great emojis and positive praise for our staff, one and all. Um, I, I think we'll keep this going with goodwill and positive thoughts. And I'll just end by saying soon we will be together and soon we will be celebrating our return to our normal Salamanca warrior ways. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Okay, we need to move on to the consent agenda. So I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Motion by Sue, second by Dale. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thumbs up? Thumbs up. Motion carried. And our personal uh, consent agenda. <clears throat> so we need a, we have a lot of different uh, tenure and everything that's listed. So we need a motion to approve the personnel consent agenda. Motion, motion by Brad. Second. Second by Dale. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Meg did give a thumbs up. Motion carried. Do we have anybody we need to introduce, Bob? We have several people we would like to introduce. Okay. Um, and I will start, and if uh, the principals are on board and they wanna unmute and join in the conversation, please let us know. But I'd like to start with the tenure recommendation of Justin Hubbard, uh, tenure area of social studies. Justin has been with us for what seems like an eternity as a substitute and then a long-term sub and then now uh, completing his tenure process at the high school in social studies. Justin is infectious and contagious in his enthusiasm. 
and he is Mr. Pep Assembly, but also so amazingly connected with our students that it's hard to put in words over a Zoom meeting. But to see him at a pep assembly or spirit week or traveling to away championship contests or working with students in the hallway or in the classroom before school, after school, during school, Justin is an exemplary model of an engaged teacher working with our Salamanca students. And I wanna personally commend Justin for working with the department and putting forward a proposal to provide supports to our students next year in the area, particularly of Global 9 and Global 10, which will see some significant curriculum changes and state assessment changes. And Justin will always is the consummate team player and will be transitioning to a global social studies and high school um, social studies intervention teacher to provide additional supports to our staff and students. And I would like to commend and wholeheartedly recommend Justin Hubbard for tenure in social studies. Congratulations. There you go. And when you stated that he's infectious and contagious, that's his personality, not his current. Not his current <laughs> medical <laughs> diagnosis, that's correct. <laughs> Great job, Justin. Um, I'm going to start uh, with um, our second tenure uh, candidate uh, in science, but I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Beeler, who's worked um, very closely with Mr. Dorenzio. And um, when Nick came to us at an upper uh, science level, uh, he immediately jumped in and started teaching uh, upper level physics classes for us. And as those uh, know, our history of attracting students into physics has been somewhat inconsistent, but under Nick's leadership, our physics numbers have consistently grown. And most recently, uh, we had 26 students in physics. And I would say that's a direct result of Nick, his ability to connect with students and his deep, deep knowledge of uh, upper level science. Um, he has been a, an integral part of our growing drone and technology program as science and technology seamlessly fuses together in our new state-of-the-art STEAM and award-winning STEAM program. Um, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Beeler for a few comments uh, about Mr. Dorenzo. Well, you already covered quite a few, but I just want to acknowledge the fact that Nick came to us um, primarily as a chemistry teacher, then he added on um, of his own will physics because he saw that we had the need um, for a physics teacher and that we had students interested in physics. But then his first year, he had a partnership with the University of Buffalo. We had a physics club after school. Um, we went uh, on field trips. It was terrific. Um, he also has uh, involved himself greatly, as you said, with the um, FAA drone program. Uh, and is one of our primary instructors. She provides a significant amount of guidance um, to our STEAM uh, program. And all around, you know, when you hire a, a teacher um, in a district like ours, it, it really shows the type of person and the type of teacher um, that a person will become when they start to expand and add on other courses, other programs, and their class numbers start to grow. Because if the kids aren't relating to the teacher, the program will die. And in this particular case, Nick has grown every program that he has been a part of. And that really speaks not only to his teaching ability, but to him as a person. So um, we welcome him and he is well deserved of tenure. So. Teaching? I may have. Yeah. You may I, have. Okay. I think my mask is plugged because it's, it's harder and harder to breathe the more I talk. It's a pandemic. We're allowed to make words my, my, up. My hot air is coming back yet. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Um, <laughs> our last tenure candidate, um, and uh, this is um, wonderful, uh, Mr. Chris Siebert, as our high school principal, is earning tenure this evening. Chris has been part of the Salamanca Warrior family for what seems like decades, and I think that that's not an understatement. First, as a science teacher, second as an assistant principal and athletic director, and for the past few years as our building principal. 
when we interviewed Chris for the building principal position just a few years ago, the candidates who were finalists were tasked well before the technology was where it's at today to create a digital message and a digital plan talking about their transition into the principalship and what we can expect from that candidate. All of the candidates did a really nice job. Chris crushed them and blew them out of the water. Not only with his deep and intimate knowledge of Salamanca and what it means to be a warrior, but the passion, the love, and the commitment to our district is unparalleled then and continues to be unparalleled today. When Chris signed off his video, other candidates gave a general generic greeting. Thank you, it's been my honor. Chris did what we would expect a warrior to do. He signed off his video with just the simple words, I am a warrior. And I think it's safe to say that I think the patent and the copyright on that phrase is pending. And we now all are talking about being warriors. I think that's a direct reflection on Chris's leadership. And while he has had the helm of the high school, the behavioral concerns, the academic progress, the community engagement, the staff participation levels are absolutely in the right direction right direction and the trajectory is unbelievable. That's leadership. And if Chris can sign out his video transition plan, I am a warrior, I would also add he is a leader. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Beeler if there's anything else you would like to add. Honestly, you know, the numbers and the staff speak for Chris. Uh, his graduation rate numbers have gone through the roof. His discipline numbers have dropped. His staff numbers have gone up. Recruitment and retention at the high school is no longer an issue. Um, I believe we see a higher level uh, of morale and interest than we have um, previously, to say the very least. Um, and quite frankly, I'm absolutely proud to say that I, I know Chris and that I work cr with Chris um, and that he's part of the, the Salamanca family. Awesome. Congratulations. And I think that's it for the introductions. Okay. You didn't miss anybody? <laughs> okay. I don't think so. Then we will go to uh, new business item A. Um, we are abolishing and creating some positions. Uh, we need to. I need a motion to approve the abolishment and the creation of the positions listed above on the agenda. Motion, motion by Barb. Second. Second by Dale. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Matt gave the thumbs up. Motion carried. And our surplus items that are listed. So we need a motion. Um, to declare the item surplus. Motion. Second. Who did that? Okay. <laughs> Motion by Dale, second by Brad. Are there any questions? Yes, just a comment. There okay. has been uh, at least one overture on some of this equipment. Uh, with the board surplusing of it this evening, we will invite those uh, individuals in to take a look at it um, so that they can actually inspect it to see if it's something that they may be interested in and then we'll take that process to the next step. Um, uh, and I'm not quite sure entirely what that is, uh, but we'll get them in to have a conversation and have them take a look at it first before we uh, scrap it. Okay. So we have a motion by Dale, second by Brad. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thumbs up from Meg. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. And our stipend for the uh, additional capital project work so uh, we need a motion to approve the stipend for the director of facilities too. Motion. Motion by Carrie. Second. Second by Sue. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thumbs up from Meg. Opposed? 
abstain, motion carried. And our consultant agreement with Dr. Taylor made a motion to approve that consultant agreement. Motion. Motion by Dale, second by Brad. Are there any questions? Yeah. Carrie's um, got a question. Bob, can you give us a summary of what's going on with this? Uh, with that, it's, um, I will turn that over to Dr. Beeler, who's been <laughs> uh, involved really, with the grant. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, this is a portion of the My Brother's Keeper grant. Um, Dr. Taylor has agreed to work with our staff um, and take on one of the primary roles of curriculum development, as well as resource development. The funding comes um, exclusively from the My Brother's Keeper Native American program grant which has been approved, um, actually we approved it, or you approved it as a school board, and was um, also run through the Title VI Parent Advisory Committee. So um, this is sort of the first phase of getting that program uh, put in place. And what is the goal? Uh, the goal is to have a comprehensive K through 12 curriculum for our students here in Salamanca, as well as a resource, uh, or become a resource center for all of New York State um, so that when teachers in other districts across New York State have questions about appropriateness, authenticity, or quite frankly, how to teach a particular topic related to Native American history, we will become the resource for that, uh, for those teachers um, and become the experts here in Salamanca. Yeah. And when do we expect completion? Uh, mm -hmm. This is a three-year project. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, he has already begun. There was a tentative approval um, from New York State for the grant, but the final approval did not come until about a few weeks ago. That's why we, we had him get started immediately because we know he would be approved, but we didn't get it before the board, um, uh, frankly, until we had the final approval from state education, the final documents. Uh, one of the pieces that is kind of tricky is, while we can say what is appropriate to teach, and how it should be taught, a lot of the resources simply aren't available or aren't appropriate or simply aren't correct. So one of the components is once we've identified what it is that we're going to teach, Dr. Taylor will also be helping us to create um, some of the resources that actually can be then distributed throughout New York State and then potentially even throughout the country um, for Native American history. Mark. Awesome. All right. Yeah, Mark, I, Mag, I had a great- I can't hear you, Mag. You can't hear, I unmuted. Can you hear now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Now we can there hear you, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I had a grant through JCC that did something similar, but there was an administration change within the nation, so it just kind of stalled. Um, so if you can pass on um, some info to, um, you know, to the group that's doing this. I know Michael from from Wells College, actually, but um, I do have some materials and some things, um, and I've worked with Seneca uh, Media and Communications on, on getting some film clips and stuff done, too, so he can have all of that um, that's already been done. Terrific. Outstanding. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Meg. Are there any other questions or comments? Then we have a motion by Dale, second by Brad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thumbs up from Meg. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. And we need a motion to approve the special education extended year, school year. Motion, motion by Barb. Second. Second by Sue. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Meg gave a thumbs up. Motion carried. And our SSSO contract. So we need a, a motion to approve uh, the contract. Motion. Second. Motion by Dale. Second by Carrie. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion. Uh, Meg gave a thumbs up. Motion carried. And item G is our budget hearing um, adjournment and related. Do we have to read it or? Um, I think it probably would not, at least the recommended action, if you want, I, I can do that. Um, or if you want to do it. The be it 
be uh, resolved. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Be resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education adjourns the annual budget hearing from May 5th, 2020 to June 2nd, 2020. And whereas personal registration of voters is required pursuant to the recommendations of section 2007, 2014 of New York State education law. Now be it resolved that the registration date for the school district budget vote and Board of Education election is hereby established as May 18th, 2020 between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. in the district clerk's office. A register containing names of registered voters will be available upon request to taxpayers and qualified voters within the district by appointment between the hours of 9 a.m prevailing time and 3 p.m. prevailing time from May 18th, 2020 to June 9th, 2020, exclusive, exclusive of Saturdays and Sundays and holidays at the office of the district clerk located in the district office, 50 Iroquois Drive, Salmink in New York, 14779. And now be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, nominating petitions are available for one Board of Election seat currently held by Board Member Carrie John, which is a five-year term effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2025. And nominating petitions must be received by the District Clerk by noon on May 11th, 2020 per the Governor's Executive Order 20.26. And be it resolved <clears throat> that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent, the Board of Education approves the requisition for property acquisitions, property leases, be approved. Anything else, Bob? I think that's it. Okay. So we need a motion um, for the budget hearing and nominating petitions. Motion by Brad. Second by Sue. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay. There's only one candidate then running so far. Unless what? More. I mean, it says now that they've extended the dates. Right. Apparently, you know, and Carrie already filed his, I'm assuming. Yes. Yes. And no one else filed at that time. Uh, not currently, no. Okay. So, I mean, most people that was interested in it, I would have thought they would have done it by now. It, you would think. You would think. Okay. That's what I just wanted to clarify is that. Okay. You are the only one. And I'm interested. <laughs> to support you, as you know everything about construction, and it's helped me a lot. Ditto. Yes, he is our expert yes, on construction. Is. Thank you. Appreciate. Tell everybody. That. Yes. Someday I'll be an expert on education. <laughs> I'll meet you there. Hey. I'm still waiting. I'm still learning. So we have a motion by Brad, second by Sue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thumbs up from Meg. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. And then our, uh, let's see. Not, not losing myself in this motion here. Uh, so Janet, so the next one. Aye. So the next one then is H. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. So the next is the seeker. Do we have to read that one too? No. No. So then we need a uh, motion for the uh, resolution uh, for negative declaration for 70 Fern Avenue and a portion of 413 Front. Motion by Dale. Second. Second by Carrie. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thumbs up from Meg. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Okay. And then item I is uh, a resolution for property acquisition. Okay. So that's the. Yes. This, this makes it permissible to go on the ballot. Okay, so we need a motion um, to approve the property going on the ballot. Motion. Motion by Carrie, second by Sue. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thumbs up from Meg. 
Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. All right, so that's I. This whole thing, item J. And item J is the acquisition. The cost. The cost? Okay. Is the cost of the property, so we need a motion to approve. Motion. Motion by Brad. Second. Second by Dale. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thumbs up from Meg. Motion carried. And that's it. That's it. All right. Uh, item eight is just our board information and reports. And now we need a motion to go into executive uh, session. Regent. Okay. Motion by Barb. Second. Second by Carrie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thumbs up from Meg. Motion carried. And that's for the purpose of contract negotiations. Yes. Contract negotiations. Thank you. Am I reconnecting to the same one? Does anyone know? Teresa? Nope. 